Okay, we're back with the Dart language tour. There's been a big hiatus <laughs> uh, because I, when I was doing this about a year ago, I landed a job where I'm I'm actually using my Rails background along with um, uh, the app we use at, at uh, Spring Health is a Flutter app, um, and so just been working and finally getting around to thinking about coming back um, since I've done some professional Flutter development um, make these videos again right and not much has changed really so I think the last thing we touched on was abstract classes and um, that was a really short bit right there but now we're gonna look at implicit interfaces okay and again if you're curious these videos I make I don't really give them a tile uh, you know, in YouTube, I don't um, edit them at all. This is kind of like long form prose where I'm just talking about um, my understanding of the Dart language coming from a Ruby background, but before that, coming from a, um, um, or not coming from a computer science background at all. So some of the stuff like interfaces means nothing to me. So I, I like to give it my own language to try to make sense of it. Okay, um, so implicit interfaces. So first of all, let's talk about what implicit versus explicit is. Um, it's a key word in programming languages like Java, for example. Um, and in old school Dart, like well, it's 2022, so 10 years ago, right? I always think of Dart as a new language, but it's been around at least 10 years. Um, they used to have this keyword interface you know, where you start typing something like we type class or mix in. Um, but this interface keyword would just kind of define a, a blueprint, like anything that implements this, uh, this interface needs to define a setter, you know, and then you change the implementation details in your own class. Um, so it used to be explicit and now it, it doesn't really exist anymore. You can, you can try to actually like type that out and it won't recognize it or give you a warning and I'll show you that in a little bit. Um, so it used to be explicit, now it's implicit in that every class implicitly defines an interface. Okay, so something that is very concrete that you can create an instance of, it can also function as an interface. Um, something that is, um, if you want to give like behavior um, to a particular class, an instance of a class, uh, for example, at the bottom of this example um, on implicit interfaces, they show this implements keyword along with comparable uh, location, right? So a point, two points can be compared, they can have locations, um, but you can't really say like comparable dot new, like a a comparable class is really, it's it's an interface in, in the sense that it defines some behavior that point can implement, that another class can implement if it's also comparable, uh, like maybe um, integer implements comparable. I don't know, you know, two, two instances of an integer class can uh, be compared to one another. Um, that's kind of the idea there okay so yeah typically like an abstract class would take the place of the old school explicit interface but something that is very concrete can also function as an interface and you'll see that whenever they define this uh, imposter class which implements the person interface um, and there's some special rules about what you have to do when you use this implements keyword okay um do, 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 do. okay so every class implement implicitly defines an interface containing all the instance members um, and of any interfaces it implements. Okay, so if you implement multiple things like comparable and location, then all the instance members of point, any new points you create, they will contain, um, Right, so comparable is an interface type class. Um, and so you get stuff from 
comparable and location, right? So that's like multiple interfaces or if, if you have like multiple class inheritance, not multiple class inheritance, multiple classes in one change of uh, multiple classes in a chain of inheritance, anything going up that change that implements something at the very bottom, that uh, bottommost nested child will also implement um, and sort of get that behavior as well, I believe. I'd have to test that to be sure. Okay, if you want to create a class A that supports class B's API without inheriting B's implementation, class A should implement the B interface. All right, so this sentence is very like mathematic-y, like computer science-y. Let's, let's use this in, um, in regular English, and we'll use the example here. If you want to create a class A, so if you want to create an imposter that supports class B's API, so that means to support it is really to act like it, okay? And the API just means like, what are the public methods that I can call from this class which I am implementing, okay? So instead of saying we support class B's API, it just means it can act like a, a class person and call the public facing uh, methods. Okay, so like person.new or you know however you do in a Dart new person or just person with parentheses, you invoke you know a new instance of a person. You can then call a dot greet, uh, but like for example, uh, even though it has a name and the constructor takes a name, you can't say person.name because there's no public getter or, or a method uh, by that same name. Okay. Um, okay, so it, it, it acts like the person API in the sense that it um, has this public method. And I've never really liked this. Like I think Ruby also does this, maybe Rails, where they talk about the the API, and, and usually when I think of an API, I'm like thinking network calls, like what service out there can I make an HTTP request to and use their API to bring back data. Um, so this usage of the term API is is different than that. Um, and all that means is, I mean, the I in API is interface, an application programming interface. It just means like which things are on the surface are publicly accessible. Um, if you were to think of this class person, like these lines of code as like a three dimensional box, like the name here, this, this property would be like deep in the center. It's inaccessible from the outside. Like when you create a new box, you, you give it a name and it's stuck in there. But the only thing you can really access is greet, like greet you can see on the surface. Okay, I hope that makes sense, it makes sense to me. Um, okay, so class A, you know, the imposter should implement the, the person interface, which it does. Um, what else do I want to say about that? Something that, that I think is interesting as well is like interfaces are completely optional. There are other like processes and mechanisms you can put in place to get the same type of behavior. Um, it comes at a cost though, at least in how you organize code and keep things together, especially if you're on a large team. Um, but you don't have to, you don't have to implement person like the imposter could, um, could still like define these things, right? You just, it just makes it a little more efficient to program using the construct um, of the interface. I take that back, actually. I think there's one one thing. Yeah, again, you don't have to do the interface in the implementation, but like for example, this greet Bob method here, and I'll show you in DartPad in a second. Um, anything that acts like a person, right? I don't have to pass in an instance of person itself. Anything that implements person can also be passed in to this method or to this function, greet Bob. Uh, so whether it's a real person or it's an imposter, um, 
and they all have that greet method defined in them, um, that's going to work. And so when you write code like this, um, implementing an interface uh, helps you write code like this because then you can pass it anything. I think this is called duck typing where it's like, you know, if it looks like a duck, it quacks like a duck, it's probably a duck. Um, so an imposter or a person, um, you can pass those into functions like that. Okay, a class implements one or more interfaces by declaring them in an implements clause. Okay, so imposter implements person. A class implements one or more interfaces using the implements keyword. Okay, that clause. And then providing the APIs required by the interfaces. Okay, so um, yeah, so let's just uh, pop this in to Dartpad. Okay, so we've got an implicit interface. So any concrete thing, any abstract thing um, can be an interface, right? Um, or it just gets the, yeah, it's an implicit interface. Um, so we have this private property called name. Um, when we construct a new person, we pass in a string name, right? Um, and then there is a public facing uh, method called greet. Um, it passes in another string and it will greet that thing. Okay. Um, right, so let's get ourselves a void main method. Again, you don't have to call it void as a return type, it just helps. Can I move this? No, I can't. I wonder. Okay. Um, so we've got main. So let's just say like var uh, Aaron equals person Aaron. And remember it takes this string because here's the constructor here. So I have a private uh, property in this person thing called Aaron, right? So I can print Aaron and that's going to be just an instance of Aaron, I think, or an instance of person. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> again, remember you used to have this new property. Now you get this unnecessary new keyword. Uh, remember I showed you how you had that keyword called interface right? Something that's adaptable or whatever, or any name here. But this interface keyword, this actually isn't even recognized. Like it's it's kind of hard deprecated, like you can't use it at all. Um, so it's not like a keyword new, which you can still use and you get a warning. Interface is just completely kaput. It's been dead for 10 years. Okay. Um, again, so we can do Aaron dot uh, greet. So who are we going to greet? Let's just say uh, Mary. Okay, so it's going to say hello, Mary. I am Aaron. Okay, so that's that's how that works. Now, uh, again, this is an implicit interface just by existing as a class. Uh, so one thing we can do is we can create another class that implements um, this class, okay? Um, the first thing you're gonna see is, let me just go ahead and comment those dudes out. So now we're gonna say missing concrete implementations of person dot greet um, and the getter uh, person dot underscore name. Now this isn't a public getter, um, right? So here's the thing that makes sense to me the most first is we've got this, um, this method, okay? Now it's the same method here. Um, I don't know if it has to have the exact same signature. Um, but let's, you know, I just wanna use this Right, and see, can I do that? Greet string function in isn't a valid override of person dot greet. Okay, so it's not validly overriding this one. So this is kind of a blueprint. Even though this hard implementation, like an instance of person, is going to run this code when you say dot greet, like I did with Aaron dot greet Mary. Okay, um, I've deviated from that blueprint. 
Okay, so the implementation doesn't matter. I can do anything different over here. See how that's different from hello, so and so, I am somebody. This one says hi, do you know who I am? Um, and I can't use a different thing there. I can't even say like, oh, maybe it's, it's optional or something. That's probably gonna barf too. Um, well, it didn't for a second. Anyways, ignore that. And the other thing we need to do is override it. Okay. We're going to line that up. Okay. The other thing is we need to have a name because when we say var, let's just say uh, this person's name is Shadow and they are an imposter. Okay. And that's a, again, a new imposter. But it needs to take, because it implements person, it kind of gets this constructor. We don't have to define its own constructor, right? We don't have to, um, again, that's OR. We don't have to say this dot underscore name in the same way that we did before. Okay, in fact, it might even, what line is that, 17? Name isn't a field in the enclosing class. Okay. Actually, let me do that. Can I override the constructor? 17, no, it still says correcting the name to match an existing field. Okay, interesting. I don't think I've seen this one before. Okay, so it's not recognizing that somehow. Found a constructor in a class that doesn't declare the field being initialized. Okay, I thought I did declare that this field maybe what if I did that no okay so this it recognizes that that's probably also not a valid override 15 annotate the overridden member name must have a method body because imposter is not abstract okay remember uh, from the abstract episode you can do this and not have oh this is a getter sorry yeah, interesting. Okay, so if I didn't want to have an implementation, I could say abstract, and that kind of denotes that whatever inherits this or implements the abstract class needs to define some behavior on it. Um, so usually interfaces, I think, are abstract. But again, everything isn't implicitly an interface. Um, so what we want to do is... Um, I think that was just an empty string, right? Okay, and we still get one more warning over here that says annotate overridden members. So we're gonna go to this line right here and say add override. Okay, so that gets rid of that warning. Um, but again, we are using, because it implements person, we get, we get this for free, is what they say. Um, right, remember how earlier I said you don't have to implement? Um, interfaces like we we literally could just say like that right and then we could have a constructor and do all these things uh, but by implementing implementing person now we get that property it's not inheritance but um, kind of acts like inheritance, I would say. Because if we have a property that holds a value, right, and we don't have to use a constructor, we're kind of inheriting, in my mind anyways, the, um, the constructor. So when I say imposter, and why is that yelling? Uh, function imposter isn't defined. Oh, it's because I put an E on it. I always do that. Um, okay, and then we're just gonna print shadow. Okay, so now all the, 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 the warnings and errors go away, which is what I like. Um, right, so we have Aaron, we have shadow. When Aaron greets Mary, it says, hello, Mary, I am Aaron. Um, Shadow is just an instance of a person, probably. No, it's an instance of imposter. Okay, that's fine. Um, I think where this gets 
interesting is when they do this, they define a function. And I call this function because it's defined outside of any class. Inside the class, I would call it a method. Um, so I can call greet Bob now that it's been defined um, and pass in something that acts like a person. It can be a person itself, like Aaron. Okay, so Aaron is an instance of a person. Okay, so that, that type is, is correct. Um, and that's just going to call the respective greet method, right? So because Aaron is an instance of person, we're gonna pass in Bob, and then, so my instance is going to say, hello, Bob, I am Aaron. I was gonna return that string, so I actually just need to print it. Okay, so let's check that out. Okay, I'm also gonna get rid of this instance of imposter thing. Okay, so here on this first one, I'm explicitly saying Aaron.greet, okay? And, but here I'm saying greet Bob and I'm just passing in Aaron. Um, I can also say print greet Bob and pass in shadow. Okay, that's the name of our imposter. Now, because we've said imposter implements person and we had to override the implementation part provided that the, the signature, that it looks the same um, as the greet method from person, uh, when it says person.greet, well, I'm passing in an instance of shadow. Okay, so shadow's greet method, it's gonna go look up this, and it's gonna say, hi, Bob, do you know who I am? Okay, and that's really the advantage, um, is that you can, you can take something that takes many forms, right, as long as it implements that interface. Okay, that's the, um, I think the gist of implicit interfaces. Let's see if there's anything I forgot. Uh, okay, they used to be explicit. Um, when I look at the docs here, it looks like abstract things, these classes that can't be instantiated, whose uh, methods uh, don't take an implementation, they are therefore abstract methods. When you implement an abstract container like this one, um, you would have to also define a method but then also give it some implementation details. Um, it has to do something because you're creating a concrete instance when you uh, instantiate uh, your class that implements uh, this abstract class. Um, it also says abstract classes are useful for defining interfaces. There you go. Um, okay. The, there's some good reading here, how to define interfaces in Dart. Uh, this was asked a while ago in 2013, um, but it gives you some some more examples. Like this, I think is is updated. It kind of gives a similar take, right? Two different classes implementing the same abstract class, and then you override the behavior. That's where you do your own thing. Um, I think that's all that was really there. That was interesting. There's a lot of answers there, but. Um, there's another one, was the interface keyword removed from Dart? And that's how we found this uh, blog post. So some more in-depth reading that's really cool to go through if you have the time and inclination. And then, uh, right, and then so when to use interfaces in Dart, okay? Uh, this one's cool because kind of like me, this person is coming from Ruby. Um, and... Um, Let's see who answered this. I think one individual did, but then I think anytime I see like Gunter Zuckbauer, I see his an an him answering a lot of uh, questions. I tend to like give those a little bit more attention and read them. Um, this looks like it's a really well done uh, couple of answers to uh, to the question. So they also give the example of quackable. You know, if something looks like a duck and quacks like a duck. Right, like an imposter acts like a human, or acts like a person, I should say. And so that's called duck typing. Um, and that's something you'll see uh, referred to in Ruby and maybe other languages. Um, yeah, so uh, that's the gist of an interface. And um, don't recall if there was anything else I wanted to show, but um, again, if, you're, if you wanna be 
really pure about it, you create an abstract class with just some like blueprint, method signature, property definitions. You don't do any property assignments with values. You don't do method implementations. Uh, the thing that implements the abstract class is going to handle that, okay? But it gives you an, a blueprint to follow so that like it keeps everybody organized if there's certain types of things that need to have certain types of um, properties and behavior. Okay. Um, the other thing was that everything's an implicit class. Um, or sorry, is an implicit interface, implicitly an interface, um, just by the nature of being a class in in Dart. So you don't have to have an abstract class. You can implement a concrete class as well, which is what this imposter does. Um, right, and then. The big benefit I saw was that you can write code in such a way that if you define, you know, maybe as an argument, it takes in the, um, you know, the topmost level thing that is implemented later. Then you can pass in a person, you can pass in an imposter. You know, we could have a class that's like, uh, you know, intelligent robot implements person. Okay. And then we can use error-driven development to say, oh, what do we need? We need a greet and a getter of name. Okay, so the first thing that I read is we need a person dot greet. So that's a um, that's a method, right? And it needs to do something. Oops. Right? Does that satisfy it? No. Um, so that's what 23 body might complete normally causing null blah 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 we can just say like print um, and in real life we would actually go up here and say what does this signature looks like and it takes a string right? thing thing like so do we need to give it a return type is that like strictly required I don't think we have to have that either right 23 adding a return or a throw statement. So maybe instead of doing that, we just return thing, whatever. That's our implementation, that's our right to do. We're just implementing the person interface. We actually don't care about any of this stuff over here. All we care about on the interface side of things is this. Okay, so I think that's gonna turn a string, right? Uh, oh yeah, and then we need to override it. And in your IDE, there are probably some tools that, that make this possible, make it a little easier. Uh, get name. Again, what did that do? Oh yeah. So you can do getters like that or like this. And this also needs to just return something. Okay, up here we don't have the return keywords because we're using the arrow stuff there. Okay, and then likewise. Always hit that page down. Override. Okay, so we kind of ended up with the same thing, but I just wanted to show you when you're writing it out, you can use error driven development uh, to land where you need to land. And that, my friends, is implicit interfaces. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments and we'll try to get them answered. Thanks.